Welcome to Cambridge House Live. I'm Bridget Anderson at the Vancouver Resource Investment Conference, and I'm joined by Mickey Fulp, the mercenary geologist. Nice to see you again, Mickey. Good to see you once again, Bridget. Tell me what you're seeing with the state of the markets. Markets still in the doldrums or depressed or whatever you want to say about it. We're, what, almost 23 months into a bear market now started uh, the day before PDAC in 2011. Uh, I think we have a ways to go. There's evidence perhaps that the bottom has come in. We saw a bottom in the Toronto Venture Index in late July, early August. We retouched that bottom in mid-December uh, with tax loss selling. So the Venture Index I think is up about 5% on the year. So maybe we've hit a bottom. But that said, there's still too many companies, too many companies with too many shares, inability to raise funds that need to go away in this business. So we end up with a, a leaner, cleaner, meaner junior resource sector. And so what does that mean for investors when they're trying to discern who the quality companies are? I mean, what are the things that they need to be looking for right now? Well, it all, as always, there are three key components, share structure, people and projects, tight share structure, people with experience who have been successful in the business before, and what I prefer, an advanced project. So that's one of the criteria. Everything, all the good companies are undervalued right now. So you find a fundamentally strong company, I think you want to make sure they have at least enough money in the bank to survive for a year or two and, and pick away at this as a contrarian. This is the buying opportunity, uh, will be the buying opportunity of the last decade for me. So what kind of opportunities are you seeing then out there? Well, I'm seeing the baby gets thrown out with the bathwater. So, uh, so fundamentally strong companies uh, in commodities that I have a long-term secular bull view of the commodities market. So uh, copper, gold, uranium, for instance, those metals are, are going to continue, in my opinion, to perform uh, in at least the mid to long term. And I think that's what you need to be looking for. So you don't buy into the theory that the super cycle is over then? Absolutely not. You know, the BIX are still the BIX. That's Brazil, India, Indonesia, and China. Uh, China slowed down, but, you know, it slowed down from 12% growth to 8% growth. That's still tremendous growth. Uh, and we have India in waiting. You know, there's 1.1 billion Indians. There's 1.3 billion Chinese. India is growing. They don't have a one child only policy. Uh, and there's still a lot of people in India without electricity. 25% of the world's population cannot turn on a light switch at night. They still live in the dark. So you that's a copper. lot of room for growth. That's right there. a lot of copper, believe me. And besides India, I mean, and you mentioned Brazil as well, I mean, there's other Asian countries that people are really keeping an eye on as well. So talk to me a little about some of those jurisdictions that you Well, watch. Indonesia, Vietnam is growing uh, boisterously. So, uh, you know, Indonesia is the uh, fourth largest population in the world. Brazil's the fifth largest. So those countries are growing. I spent quite a lot of time in Brazil and, and in the streets of Rio or Sao Paulo, uh, you're probably seeing cars as nicer and nicer than you see driving around in Vancouver. So there's middle classes growing and those people, because really of the internet, they know what we have. They know what we have in North America and, and Western Europe and Japan and they want those things and now they have the financial wherewithal to, uh, to buy those sorts of uh, what things that we consider essential but they're really luxury items. Are there any jurisdictions that you stay away from? Oh, absolutely, and it seems uh, geopolitical risk is always around us. It's a floating target, but, uh, but Africa is still a very difficult place to operate, uh, and I do not foresee that changing uh, a year Despite ago. Despite the resources that exist there. Right, uh, tremendous potential mm -hmm. for resources, for commodities especially, for metals, uh, but uh, you never quite know which country's going to blow up next. For instance, Mali, uh, a couple of gold mines there a year ago, we would have said Mali's a safe jurisdiction, and now all Not hell's now. broken loose there. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a, I think Africa is still going to be a very difficult place to operate. 
So those are the emerging markets. And then let's take a look at North America. Mm -hmm. There has been a lot of concern about some of the debt structure in the U.S. and about trying to deal with that and move ahead of that and, and really keeping an eye on that economy. So give me your thoughts on where you see the American economy going. Well, as a, an Austrian economist and a libertarian, I'm not particularly pleased the way the United States has gone, but it's a fact that uh, we have tremendous debt. Uh, the banksters have seen to be able to continue to kick the can down the road. There's certainly evidence in the U.S that we are coming out of, of a, a, a fairly long recession and that the economy is getting better. That said, we are printing over, or with a stroke of a keyboard really, we mm -hmm. just create money, uh, and at some point that's going to come to bear. But, but every country in the world is doing the same thing. Look at Japanese right now. Fiat currencies are what they, they are, and they are, are currencies by mandate, and they continue to devalue because of, uh, of, more, of more debt and more currency on the market. That bodes well for gold. Now today is Inauguration Day. President Obama is, uh, is. being inaugurated today for his second term. So what kinds of things are you going to be watching for in his administration? Well, uh, as an Austrian economist and libertarian, uh, most of the policies of the uh, Obama executive branch are probably things I don't especially agree with, but we do have a, a Republican House of Representatives mm -hmm. and I see a bunch of stalemate and gridlock and from a person's point of view that I don't particularly like government and I prefer less government, the fact that, that Obama does not, con the Democratic Party does not control Congress is uh, a positive to me because there's going to be a lot of programs that are not going to be able to be passed through. Could be a, an interesting four years. Well, no doubt. All right, so let's talk about the junior mining sector. A lot of volatility, rough year in 2012. So how does an investor deal with that volatility? Well, I think our volatility is good. I, I wrote a piece about a year ago called Embrace Volatility. And the idea that, that volatility gives you uh, buying and selling opportunities. So if the market was flatlining lining <laughs> all the time, we'd have nothing to nothing trade. To There'd be about. no ability to make money in it. But extreme volatility, I welcome that. The VIX, the, the, the higher the VIX goes, the better off, I think, uh, in, uh, speculators in the junior resource sector are. You know, the, all these stocks, I challenge you to go, uh, the three or four or 500 companies here, go find me one that doesn't have a double in a 50 week, any running 52 mm -hmm. week period from its high to its low. Well, my business model is to trade on doubles. So, so we've got it. You just got to pick it when no one else wants it. When liquidity is yeah. low, be a contrarian. Uh, have some intestinal fortitude to buy when the market is out of favor and at some point it's going to come back. Those two key words, risk management. Absolutely. Okay. This is a high risk, high reward mm -hmm. industry and, uh, and we like that. Now you're a bit of an expert on specialty metals, so let's yes. talk a little bit about that. What stands out for you and why? Well, most of the specialty metals I'm not particularly fond of, but, but there's a couple that I'm looking for uh, because they have uh, the ability for small junior companies to put mines in production fairly quickly and not have third party risk, not high capexes. And so those would be tungsten and antimony. So of all that space out there, and there's about 35 of these specialty metals, the two at the top of my list right now would be tungsten and antimony. And any jurisdictions that uh, you know are, are correlated with that? North America. Let's stick in. Let's. Let, well, we can expand that, but certainly for tungsten, I'm looking uh, in North America, perhaps Western Europe, in historic uh, uh, tungsten producing areas. Uh, Anemone. Uh, I think I found my tungsten company, and we may come out with that in the next couple of weeks. Okay. But I'm still trying to find an anemone company. All right, Mickey, we'll be watching. Thanks so okay. much for joining us. Thanks a lot, Bridget.